Okay, so on this first number 1a, you'll discover something if you realize the whole circle is 360, and they give you that much of it, 70 and 220. So as soon as you figure out the missing part, you're going to notice something about those two arcs and those two sides. And question B, it gives you some information up here. Don't ignore that, that IJ is 10. If IJ is 10, and you notice the arc that it slices off is 80, right? 55 and 25 is really 80 when you total it up. And you figure out what this arc is. There's going to be something strikingly similar between this arc and this arc, which means that this chord and this chord must have that same relationship. Okay, and letter C. It gives you three arcs out of the total of four that exist on this particular circle. So if a whole circle is 360, take away this and this and this, and you will get this arc out here. My guess is that something will be obvious about this number right here when compared to these other three. And once you know what that relationship is, look at the side that's related to that same arc. In question D, it's telling us that we have three equal sides, that this is the same as this is the same as this. If they're calling this x, well then that has to be x, and that has to be x, because equal chords create equal arcs. So if you started with 360 and took away this random 27 piece that sticks out, you end up with 333 degrees left in the circle that you then must divide equally among the three parts. Question E. Okay, on E, looks a little confusing because there's two different size things going on. This, this, and this are all the same. And it also goes ahead and tells us that this arc and this arc are the same. So three equal chords and two equal arcs. But don't look past the fact that there's a diameter going through the middle of this thing. Right? So if there's 180 on the left and you already know 88, 